1 Samuel 29 Now the Philistines gathered together all their armies to Aphek, and the Israelites pitched by a fountain which is in Jezreel. Okay, here is another battle coming out. Philistines versus the Israelites. This has happened quite often. And the lords of the Philistines passed on by hundreds and by thousands. And what it is, is that, is that uh, military march. They're leaving. They got a possession of men, of troops, and they're marching out. People are probably watching, probably maybe waving flags. But David and his men passed on in the rearward, way in the back, with Achish. Now, where are they going? They are going against Israel. And the Philistine troops are marching on. And behind them is David and his men. Then said the princes unto the Philistines. So, the military is marching and the princes are looking. Oh, look how great those men are. Look how well dressed they are. Those young men are going to go out and fight our enemy. You may our gods bless them. What a great nation we have. Who's that over there? That's David and his men. Why are they there? And the princes in the Philistine, what do these Hebrews here? Those are not Philistines. What do these Hebrews here? They are going. The Philistines are going to kill Jews. What are these Hebrews here? It's like the Holy Spirit is putting in these men. Uh, why is David there? He's not a Philistine. And Achish said unto the princes of the Philistine, Is not this David, the servant of Saul, <clears throat> me, and the king of Israel? Yes, it is. Saul is of Israel. Which has been with me these days, these years. Achis is king, says, Listen, that's David and his men. Yes, he was under King Saul, our enemy. That's why he probably said King Saul. Yep, he's the one who's under King Saul. There he is. I have found no fault in him. Look at that Jesus Christ mark there. I find no fault. That is what Pilate said. The enemy of the Jews. Since he fell, now Christ didn't fall, but since he fell unto me unto this day, that doesn't mean that David tripped. That means David left his men. He left Israel. He left Saul and came to me. And it's been days, it's been years, and I found nothing wrong with him. And the princes of Philistines were wroth with him, Achish. And, set, and the princes of the Philistines said unto him, Make this fellow return. Now God is protecting David now. And we'll see it more in the next chapter, Lord willing. But God has gotten the Philistines. who God has called the Philistines. The Israelites are sinning and God calls other nations. They go in there and give them spank in the rear end. For me. That's what he did with King Nebuchadnezzar. He said, My servant... Go in there and just wipe the whole thing out. Totally wipe it out because they've sinned against me. But I've got a problem before you guys go. See, the Philistines are like, yeah, marching on to kill these people. But God says, I don't want David there. You get David out of there. And of all the military leaders, and I remember Philistines is divided into five areas. Ake is one of them. Of Gath. Well, he's one man that's for David. And God's got to get the, you, know, you got to get, David does not belong there. And you see how well David's in rebellion, how David's much fear, how much David is on the run that he is now marching to go kill Saul and his men. And he's been protecting Saul twice. I will not kill the Lord's anointed. I will not kill the Lord's anointed. David, you and your men right now are marching to war. 
And that man that's going to be on the other side of that battlefield is going to be Saul. And you know Satan will put that bow and arrow of yours, that sword of yours, whatever you have, David. Satan will take that and use it against Saul and have you kill Saul. So God has to pull David out using the Philistine rulers. Make this fellow return. Make him. That he may go again to his place. He don't belong here. That guy's a Hebrew. He's an alien. They got the same trouble that Trump has with illegal aliens in this country as with David not being in their country. Get him out. His place. Where is his place? Over there in the other battlefield with those men. And David's head would be also a trophy to the princes to be. Any one of these princes of Philistine come and say, well, what, whose head is that? Isn't that David's head you got? Yeah. I slow David. That's a war trophy. And he's on the wrong side. His place which thou has appointed him. Ziglag. We know you gave him property. We know you gave him a town. He does not belong here. Will you send him back to Ziglag? Which thou has appointed him, and let him not go down with us to battle. We don't want him here. Get him out. Least in the battle he may be an adversary to us. For, for wherewith should he reconcile himself unto his master Saul? Should it not be with the heads of these men? All right, David's in the rear, rear wood. He's way in the back. What if one man, you know, he gets, you know what? That's my family. That's my people. That's my nation. You know, David had the greatest vantage point with his 600 men to start killing the Philistines from the rear. As they're marching forward, he would take, he would, if he had changed sides, he could take his swords and his weaponry and start knocking off the Philistines from the back. The Jews in the front will be wiping out the Philistines from the front. And next thing you know, it just be, here it comes. And the Philistines would be in a sandwich, dead. If David were to change his mind. And here we go again. Is not this David of whom they sang one to another in dances, saying, Saul slew his thousands and David his ten thousands? I got one reference. This is 1 Samuel 18.7. Now, when did they sing? It was all like the night. When did they sing that? When Goliath and the, and the military men of Philistines were dead. Achish. One of the greatest songs that we still remember today is David when he killed Goliath. And the military men of Israel killed our men. Don't you remember that song? He was killing Philistine and the Philistine. This has haunted David from day one of Goliath. And has come back, especially to Achish, about this song. Then Achish called David and said unto him, Surely as the Lord liveth, thou hast been upright, Jesus, and thy going out and thy coming in with me in the host is good in my sight. Type of Jesus Christ, I find no fault in you. For I have not found evil in thee since the day of thy coming. Look at that. Now David's a sinner. Christ wasn't a sinner and Pilate says, I have found no fault in you four times. Here is two times. One time, Achish is talking to the Philistine Lord. And another time, he's addressing David himself. Oh, we only had it a couple more times. Four times, Pilate said. And a fifth time, uh, Herod said. I, I, I can't find another one of them. For I have not found evil in thy sight. Uh, it, I have not found evil in thee since the day of thy coming unto me, unto this day. Nevertheless, the word, the Lord favor thee not. They don't like you. 
Wherefore now return and go in peace, that thou displease not the Lord to the Philistines. Get out of here, David. Got to let you go. It's four verses one, and I lost. And David said to Achish, But what have I done? And what hast thou found in thy servant so long as I have been with thee unto this day, that I may not go fight against the enemies of my lord the king? That's God's people. David is bound and determined to go kill the, the Philistine enemies, Achish enemy, but he's forgetting they are Jewish people. He is forgetting it is King Saul. Now, a young man said this before, 1729. 1 Samuel 1729. And it's also a reminder... <laughs> 1729. In verse 28, his brother Elab gives him a tongue lash. I don't know if, if Achish has given David a tongue lashing, but 29, David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? <laughs> this is man. How come? Oh, oh, wait a minute. His brother said, you know, David says to his brother, what, what have I done? He's done nothing. Achan says, I find no fault in him. And he tells David, I find no fault in you. David's like, he's always getting blamed. And he's like, well, what did I do? And they're both involved the Philistine army. That was back when Goliath was kept marching up. Now, therefore... Wherefore, now return and go in peace. Now, this please not the lords of the Philistines. And David said to Achish, But what have I done? What hast thou found in thy sight, thy, excuse me, thy servants, so long? We've been, been together so long. As I have been with thee unto this day, today, right now. What is thy done to thee that you're telling me to leave? That I may not go fight against the enemies of my lord the king verse one verse one and the philistines got the philistines gathered together all their armies to aphek and the israelites that's the enemy what has david done in these years he, he's he's ready to fight and kill jews god's people and Achis answered and said to David, I know that thou art good in my sight. Oh, there you go. There's, there's three times. There's three times I find no fault in you, David. I know that thou art good in my sight. As an angel of God. Now where would a Gentile, Philistine, of Dagon come up with a Hebrew man who's an enemy to the Philistines <laughs> every battle that Saul had against the Philistines David was there fighting David took down their warrior and this man is looking at David I know they don't want you here man you are without fault you are without fault you have been good in my eyes you are as the angel or an angel of God You're an angel, and you find that in many old songs, 50s and 60s songs, you know, Earth Angel and all that. An angel of God, not devil. So there's four times he's told David, you're clean and innocent, because what angel of God is guilty of anything? Notwithstanding, the princes of the Philistines have said, he shall not go up with us to battle. Now, isn't it good that Achish follows his leaders and does not rebel against his government? That even with this man, they are friends, they are comrades, they're together. He says, listen, the government has told me four out of five, I'm the one that is going against you. 
Sorry, four out of five dentists. Here's four out of five Philistine lords. The four tell me you can't be here. And God's trying to protect David, and Achish is going with the leaders of the government to say, David, you can't be here. And God is in heaven, like, okay, check that off. Accomplished. David can't be there. In chapter number 30, we're going to see God keep David away. Keep the testimony of David away. But right now, physically, David is going to be gone. Physically. But not completely. Not, notwithstanding, the princes of the Philistines have said, he shall not go up with us to the battle. Wherefore now, not, wherefore now rise up early in the morning with thy master's servants, the 600 men, that are come with thee. And as soon as ye be up early in the morning and have light, the sunrise, depart. So David and his men rose up early to depart in the morning to return into the land of the Philistines. And the Philistines went up to Jezreel, and there's where the battle. We are going to now see the battle of the Philistines and the Israelites. And Saul's going to die. But the main focus we're going to see is David is not there. And God's going to make it so no one can say, well, David was there. Because someone in Hebrews, someone in the land of Israel, somewhere in the, in the Philistine army, Somebody would be sitting back and said, I saw David and his men in the army. And it's 100% correct. And when it comes to the death of Saul coming up, David cannot be charged with that murder. And God's going to do two things. He's going to put David somewhere else in a battle, but not the Philistine battle. And then he's going to have Saul kill his own self. So if anybody were to say, David did it after all, we saw him in the Philistine army, it would be, no, David and his men were over there in another battle. God is protecting David physically, spiritually, to make sure that it cannot ever be saying it was David that killed Saul. But right now, David was at the point, I'll go kill him, and not even realizing he's going to kill him. Now, maybe he would have had a second thought. Maybe he would have been on that battlefield like the Philistines said, hey, as soon as he sees his men, he's going to... Maybe he would have done that. We don't know. We don't know what the condition of David is right now. He's ready to go kill Jews. God says, i got to put a stop to that. That man's anointed to be the king. He can't be the king of the Hebrew people killing the Hebrew people. That's not right. And I won't be able to use a man after my own heart like that. 